This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, the first Sunday of the new year. And I imagine if we were all gathered here at the church, that this could be a day where we would be sharing our New Year's resolutions, especially after the service. We would gather and we would ask, so what have you resolved to do this year? Oh, less sugar? How about you? Read more, maybe read the Bible in a year. Me? Work out more, drink less coffee? And when I, think, when I think back to past resolutions, they were often always the same. Typically the same resolution. And I remember my father would always tease me when it came to my New Year's resolution. For, of course, I would maybe make it into March with my New Year's resolution. And even better, when I brought this up to Andrea, she mentioned that's why she doesn't make New Year's resolutions. So what's, what's the point of creating a resolution that wasn't going to be kept? Maybe wise on her part. Yet it's something that we do, many of us do each year. Resolutions that serve as reminders of visions and dreams we want to hold on to and keep. It's a time where we can recommit to certain goals we always have, maybe even a time to commit to new goals we always wanted to have. And when the calendar is flipped to a new year, each one of us is given a moment to reflect, to envision what a new year could look like, to dream of the possibilities the year holds for us. Let us reinforce the resolutions we have. Let us forge the resolutions we want. And what do we do once we reflect on our dreams for the year? We share it with one another. Hey, guess what my resolution is? Epiphany Sunday, I think, can also serve as a time to reflect, to hear the resolution the church can have for the year, to reinforce what the good news means, of what kind of world the good news can forge, of what this good news can mean as we share it with one another. Epiphany Sunday serves as a reminder of the commitment God has for this world, the commitment that God has for you. For on Epiphany Sunday, we celebrate the word incarnate has been revealed to all for the reconciliation of all. The division between God and us has been reconciled in Christ. The division between us and others has been reconciled in Christ. Any line of division here today is dismantled for Christ is reconciling all. And we hear this when we read the word incarnate has been revealed even to the Gentiles. How scandalous and revolutionary the inclusion of Gentiles, yet how it is a promise of old kept. For God has always been in the business of including all into God's care and resolving for all of heaven and earth will be reconciled. For the words of Paul, they're not a new message. For he is reinforcing a commitment of old, a commitment that is held true today and revealed. In our lectionary text, hold this to be true. As our Isaiah passage spoke of all nations, regardless of divisions present or constructed, would gather in the presence of God. Paul shares this resolution of inclusivity of our God that has been shared before. Yet Paul is not the first to do this in the Christian movement. For Jesus before Paul showed how inclusivity was present in the good news. Mind you, 
at the frustration of the religious leaders of the day. When the religion of Jesus' day restricted him, Jesus broke those boundaries. When a tradition of his time spoke the rich were closer to the kingdom of heaven, Jesus spoke that the poor would inherit the kingdom. When a tradition of Jesus' time drew a line between those who are in and those who are out, Jesus dined with the tax collector. The children showed up at his feet. Women were the first to share the good news. Jesus. Jesus, the word incarnate, revealed even before Paul, revealed and resolved how any lines of exclusion, even those of Gentile and Jew, was being challenged, erased, eradicated. God includes all into God's divine care. God, God includes you into God's divine care. And Paul, Paul can't help but share this. It must be known, let it be known, that the good news includes you, that this good news is captivating a new gravity force, a new resolution to hold on to, a new point of reference, a new starting point. For Paul, Paul says he is a servant, a slave of this good news. And what do we do with this problematic metaphor? For we know the good news is one of liberation and freedom. No, Paul is saying from his own testimony, his own epiphany moment, friends, listen, my friends, this good news is such good news of freedom and liberation that I know nothing else than this good news. This good news has captivated me to the extent that I can know of no other master, know of no other that considers me a co-heir of the inheritance, a co-heir of Christ. And so Paul speaks of this inclusive gospel that has broken barriers. That is the promise of old kept, the promise of old kept in the incarnate word found in the crucified Christ that Paul speaks, that Paul speaks with such boldness and confidence through faith in Christ. Indeed, in verse 12, he shares, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in Christ. The Greek boldly, Parisian, is to speak to speak without regard for consequences. And where, where does Paul get this boldness and confidence? It's from the access, the access to prosagogen, the access to Christ Jesus, that one is enabled and empowered to have strength and confidence to speak without consequence. The epiphany the resolution of what our God is doing in our world is so powerful and revolutionary that it is this good news that gives us the confidence in Christ to speak boldly without consequence, that Christ is reconciling all things. Christ is inclusive, bringing all things under God's divine care. We must dream boldly, for God's grace is free to you and I, to all who hear this day, God loves you and includes you into God's promise and love. And this epiphany, this radical good news that barriers are being broken down, that our God is inclusive and is reconciling all things, it's not just an intellectual exercise. For when we speak of the vertical aspect of faith being reconciled between God and us, we also speak of the horizontal aspect of faith being reconciled between you and I, our neighbor and stranger, our friend and enemy. They are intertwined, destined together for the kingdom come. And when we hear this revolution this resolution of what the manger scene means for all of creation revealed to be to the, Jew, to the Jews and to the Gentiles, 
it means that this mystery of Christ calls us to take our place in the eternal purpose. And I'm tempted. I'm tempted to think that on this Epiphany Sunday, that I have found my Epiphany, my New Year's resolution, when I have broken down the walls of myself to be able to come to the manger scene to Bethlehem where the Christ child is born to two poor young people in Nazareth that I have found our, my, our Messiah. And I think, maybe we think, that to have a pure epiphany is to think that we have come to witness our God who is born in this humble manger. But what if I were to tell you the epiphany of the Lord is not when you have come to witness the baby, Jesus, at the humble manger. Instead, epiphany is to witness that the crucified, mutilated Christ has found you. It is the crucified Christ that has broken down the walls that has separated us from God, separated us from one another. This is the epiphany. Christ has found you included you. And now, now we must be bold and confident to proclaim this good news, to proclaim this epiphany that brings us into the eternal purpose. And so, what are you expecting in this new year when this resolution, when this good news is proclaimed? Are you waiting for this revelation to remain with Paul in the first century? Are we waiting for Paul to be the only one emboldened by this revolutionary resolution? For him to be the only one to let it be known to every person and gathering of people he encounters that Christ has included all. Look in the mirror. The change you have been waiting to see in the world starts with you. The change you have been waiting for, this resolution has found us, church. This resolution has found us, church. A resolution of inclusion that empowers us to speak with boldness and with confidence. For the speech of power is found in the spirit of truth. In the same way that Paul proclaimed the walls and barriers were being torn down by the good news of Christ. We embrace the lineage of Epiphany, knowing that our God is keeping the promise of old today, that God includes all, that God's grace is for all, and that, yes, the grace of God is for all, yet it does have a cost for keeping this resolution of the good news is a task. It's not one that we hold just until March, like I would with my New Year's resolution. Instead, it's a resolution that we are obedient to, this good news that breaks down the barriers of who's in and who's out today and forevermore. It's a resolution that is following in the footsteps of the prophets, of the word incarnate who dine with those at the margins, and the Apostle Paul, who proclaimed the Spirit, was moving and including all in accordance with the heavenly purpose of Christ Jesus our Lord. So what is there left to do? What is there left to do but to let it be known? Like Paul, let us proclaim with boldness and confidence that the Sunday of Epiphany is a Sunday proclaimed that our God is removing all barriers and walls between God and us, between us and one another. That our God has been reconciling, is reconciling, and will continue to be reconciling all of creation. For all barriers are removed, and the cost, the cost of this resolution, is the cost of us proclaiming this resolution from the mountaintops with no regards for consequence, with the confidence that only comes with the good news found in Christ. So let it be known that the reconciling news is for the poor and marginalized, for Christ has come to lift the lowly, 
to proclaim liberation for the oppressed. Let it be known that the reconciling good news loves black and brown bodies. It affirms Black Lives Matter, for our Christ was a person of color crucified by the state of his time. Let it be known that the reconciling good news affirms indigenous bodies, for the good news arrived in the land that was occupied by Rome, that the good news has arrived in Swarthmore, and on the land that was held by Lenny Lenape, the caretakers of this land, the river of human beings. Let it be known that the reconciling good news is undocumented, for it is our infant Christ who travels to Egypt, fleeing violence, who looks for a place to call home. Let it be known that the reconciling good news is queer, for Christ had two mothers, Mary and the spirit, Sophia. For even before Apostle Paul encountered Christ in Acts 9, in Acts 8, the Ethiopian eunuch was baptized. For what barrier can withhold us from the baptism of the Spirit? Let it be known that the reconciling good news is different able body. For it is the mutilated body of Christ that is, that is glorified. And let us not doubt as Thomas did, for this is the body glorified. Let it be known that the reconciling good news was first proclaimed, professed, and shared by women. For it was women at the tomb who first heard of the crucified Christ resurrected. It was a woman who carried the epistle of Romans to the church in Rome and the minister Phoebe. Let it be known that the resolution of our God has been revealed to all, for the reconciliation of all. It did not wait for us to come to the manger. Indeed, it found us. And so what are you waiting for? For it's you. You are the change you have been waiting for. For this resolution has found us, church. This resolution has found us, church. That the grace of God is for all, yet it does have a cost as keeping this resolution is a task. It's one that we commit to, recommit to, reflect on and reclaim as our own in this new year on this Sunday of Epiphany. For it is the church that through the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. For when we proclaim the radical resolution found in the, new, in the good news, we are doing so in accordance with the eternal purpose that God has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in Jesus. For today, we affirm the epiphany of our Lord, Emmanuel, God is with us. And God is with us in the table we gather at, where neither Jew nor Gentile nor any barrier that existed before can hold anyone from coming to this table. For in Christ, all things are reconciled, all are welcomed, a table that is inclusive and welcomes all. This is the revolutionary resolution we are to hold and uphold. This is our resolution for the new year as revealed in the mystery of Christ in whom we have boldness to proclaim without regard of consequence and whose confidence we have received in the grace of Christ today and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>